Fisk. What? Horatio Fisk. What did you make of all that mumble jumble? <clears throat> the beliefs of others are always of interest. Really? Then tell me this, then. Why don't they get in touch? Souls, I mean. Well, I imagine if the Swami is correct, they're all too busy being whoever they've become. It's a light-hearted, warm take on the idea of reincarnation. Uh, it uses storytelling to overcome our dark memories and um, problems with the present. Uh, at heart, it's a father and son reconciliation story. Um, Sounds uh, good. I wanted to work with a cast that could really pull off this story because you know it is you know kind of outlandish idea, but at the heart of it, it's a really true story about human beings and a father and a son who don't connect. So it was going to be really important to get you know actors that could really bring the lightness and the emotion to the story. To uh, work with the likes of Sam Neill and Brian Brown and Jeremy Northam and the big Peter O'Toole was a uh, pretty, pretty big honour for me. Yes, the mole. The master wasn't nearly suspicious enough of the mole. I never trusted it. Never the same two nights in a row. I couldn't hear it, couldn't smell it. Matter could take your own right mind on that, and others do. I had a friend who'd never worried about the bone, but then he didn't have a house to guard. If you make a mistake on a film set in New Zealand, for instance, if you leave your cell phone on or if you knock a light stand over or something like that, you owe the crew a slab, which is to say you have to buy 24 cans of beer. On Dean Spanley, like, you know, props to the professionalism of the English crew and cast. Mm. There were only two slabs, the gaffer, a very experienced man who fell asleep during one of the most emotional scenes between Jeremy Northern and Peter O'Toole, snored from behind the screen. And the only other one was Jeremy Northern leaving his iPod on during the take. That's what it was. <laughs>